in real life. <laughs> so hey guys, it's Angela with North Carolina School of Choice and just want to remind you if you like this sort of content about school choice issues and expanding choice options in the state of North Carolina, just want to encourage you to go to NorthCarolinaSchoolChoice.com, scroll down to the bottom, uh, fill, in, fill out your information on the very short form and subscribe to the website so we can connect with you directly in the future. Um, and another way you can connect is to subscribe to the YouTube channel where we are bringing you content uh, about these issues. So today we have Izzy Humphreys again. You've seen her before. Um, Izzy is a homeschooler in North Carolina. She's 13 years old and we just got done watching um, a homeschooling broadcast uh, where it was kind of in a response to um, Elizabeth Bartholet's um, presumptive ban on homeschooling. So Izzy being a homeschooler, um, we we took some notes and we, we have a couple of follow-ups. So uh, welcome Isabella or I AKA Izzy to the broadcast. And we, and, you know, if you have someone young who would like to get involved, um, you know, send them our way and we can collaborate with Izzy and other kids in the area. So Izzy, let's get to it. So today is June 15th. Um, is there anything you want to say to introduce yourself? Uh, not really. <laughs> You're a natural, right? No. <laughs> All right. So we watched a broadcast that was over an hour long. Um, Very long. It was an hour and a half, actually. Yeah, an hour and a half, and they did quite a bit of Q&A, and they went longer, and I appreciate that because there's a lot of information to unpack, unpack with that broadcast. You could see that they had um, two folks on one side with certain opinions and then two folks on the other side. So you had Carrie McDonald, you had um, Neil McCluskey, and then on opposing side, you had Milton Gaither and Elizabeth Bartholet. So Elizabeth Bartholet has made herself known because she considered um, banning homeschooling and talked about it very seriously as though parents, homeschool parents were abusing their children. Um, so that's what we're going to kind of dig into. And that was kind of one of the reasons why we watched um, and listened to what she had to say. Um, so it started out talking about, um, Neil started talking about a libertarian perspective. Um, so <laughs> I know you don't really want to dig into this, but he touched on parents' rights. Um, and so he would be concerned for parents' rights over another life, but he asserted that he thought parents had the duty to teach kids how to be self-governing adults. So what do you think about that? You definitely had an opinion on that. You're right. Um, I, I do think that, I don't think that parents have, you know, complete control over their children. Ch children also have rights, though they may not get all of them until, you know, they're 18 years old or whatever. But um, yeah, I think parents, parent, they, they don't have control, complete control over their children, but they, they have the duty to teach their children, you know, how to make the correct decisions in life, teach them, you know, basic things so they can become a successful adult. Yeah, so he mentioned basic building blocks to learn were reading, writing, math. Um, and then he didn't disagree with stopping abuse or neglect, of course. Nobody wants children to be abused or neglected, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Milton went next. Um, and can you describe what you heard Milton say? Uh... He had a lot to say. Uh, and he got a lot of comments in response to what he said in the very oh, beginning. Well, he was he was he was mentioning pretty much all of the bad cases of where um, homeschool children had been abused, you know, uh, neglected, murdered even. And that is not the case. I mean, you see all these public school instances where these children are being um, sexually harassed. And no, they're not trashing the entire public school system. No. And many of these teachers that, you know, were uh, sexually assaulting the kids are not even being fired. So you can't you can't trash homeschool homeschoolers and all homeschoolers and then not do the same with your public school you know yeah 
Yeah, he so he yeah, he actually did talk about murdering. He mentioned uh 2008 Benita Jacks how four of her daughters were found um deceased and rotting in her house. Pretty dramatic, right? Um uh, but I think he was going for that kind of um he wanted to put out that content for a reason and say, "Oh my gosh, yes, we've definitely got to police homeschools, right? Because children will end up dead." Um and we hear this a lot where um, people who disagree, they attack, they, they focus, they laser focus on a few small cases, very bad cases, of course, like we just got done saying, no, no one is going to support abuse or neglect, right? Uh, so of course, we're not going to support murder and the loss of life, right? But that doesn't mean that we need to invite um, the authorities into our home to supervise us, Um when there's, you know, neighbors and other folks that could be watching out, you know, for the children in their community. Um, so, yeah, he, he gave those dramatic um, examples. And I don't think that that's why homeschoolers homeschool, do you? So they can abuse their children. No. And, um, they, they probably took their children out of the public system because they were being abused. Maybe so. Mentally, physically, bullied, you know. So Carrie McDonald mentioned um, the government intervening in family life. Um, do you think parents are guilty until proven innocent no. when it comes to homeschooling? That's No, that's never the case. Never in anything. No. <laughs> do you feel isolated from um, culture? Um, no, absolutely not. I don't. And, you know, sometimes I wish I was isolated from culture because some <laughs> cultures, you know, mm, like, okay, they were talking about how, yeah, we need to force socialization on homeschoolers. They need to, you know, take classes at their local public school so they can be around other kids. I don't want to be around those other kids there. I want to be around people that I like to hang out with. I mean, you as an adult, um, do you go hang out with the people that you find, you know, unfriendly? No, you're not forced to hang out with anyone. Good point, Izzy. So what do you think about NAEP scores? We quickly um, went over what NAEP scores are. And so that's just the national testing. I think it happens every four years right. for the government school. So um, I think Karen McDonald was the one who mentioned NAEP scores had declined in math and reading across the nation. Also, 15% proficiency in U.S. history. Um, and she also added that there was no compelling evidence to say homeschooling parents uh, are more likely to abuse kids. What are your thoughts on that? Should you stay in a school where your scores are flopping or declining or should maybe we should consider seeking other options. Yeah. Um, so uh, how do I put this? So I remember when I was in school, which, you know, maybe that's different because it was in elementary, but I had no history. I remember learning nothing in history class at all. I, I don't remember anything from science. All I remember is math and, you know, um, reading or whatever. But now history is a subject that I enjoy. And it's something that I think a lot of kids and, you know, teenagers and adults know nothing about. Like, a lot, I, 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 a lot of kids my age don't even know, like, the first five presidents. A lot of them don't even know the First Amendment. Like, the First Amendment. Mm, we've seen a lot of adults don't know the First Amendment. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, and I was reading a book yesterday and it was like, uh, uh, like over 50% of 18 to 24 year olds don't know the 19th amendment, which was, which is, or is, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the 19th amendment, which gives women the right to vote. So, mm. so what do you think about the riskiness of raising kids in isolation? I think okay. Bartholet said well, oh, she it's was, risky. She says it was risky because they need diversity in their, and they don't, you know, their parents are forcing their opinions on their children and raising them with, so they don't know anything, but. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> 
It's oh, ridiculous. Bartholet also said it was hard to study the homeschool population. So um, you could see in a lot of the comments where I think you were paying more attention to the comments where I was just paying more attention to the oh. speakers. Would you notice in the comments when she was talking about um, studying this population and what went through your mind? Do you want people to study you? I don't As want no, I don't want to be studied. I don't want people coming in and checking up on me regularly. I don't want I no. No. That's, I don't I don't that's like mass surveillance. Yeah, no. So um it was also mentioned that teachers in the government schools were mandated reporters of abuse. Yeah. What do you think about that? Anything significant? Not really. I mean it just go. It just adds on to that surveillance. Yeah. They want people watching people in schools. So just like how we're all being tracked on our phones right now. Are you gonna read 1984 after this? I've, thing today? I've listened to parts of it. That's right on audiobook. They're always watching. <laughs> um, how about this this section? Um, they said got so Elizabeth Bartholet was very aware that government schools had lots of problems. Oh, oh, yeah, and she was... <laughs> she even admitted bad stuff can happen in schools. Yeah, she was like, oh, oh, we have a very... We have taken samples of homeschoolers or public schools, very small samples, but still. She also admitted that um, bad stuff... Okay, so I think I said this, bad stuff can happen in school, schools, um, and she mentioned homeschool parents will do a better job and protect children from bullying. So right. it's almost as though she's she's not... contradicting herself. Um, let's see. I think Carrie McDonald said government schools not safe for many, um, uh, and parents realize that they are being watched and surveilled. There's metal detectors. Oh, yeah. There's licensed educators, and still rampant abu rampant abuse still exists. Yeah, and also. What didn't she say something about how they were using CPS against the parents who didn't comply to the government uh, government schools um, yep. recommendations on how they should you know raise their own children? Yeah, Carrie McDonald argued that we should consider improving CPS, which is Child Protective Services. It may be called something else in your state. So yeah, she mentioned a 2018 he Heckinger report. However, you pronounce that. Um, weaponizing CPS against non-compliant parents. Um, so she also mentioned homeschoolers were regularly immersed in in community activities. Um, and oh yeah, and we're like, how many more times likely to use libraries, public museums? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so. How about those drop-in visits from the government? You want to be surveilled? No! I don't want a government <laughs> official coming in and checking up on how I'm doing in life. Do you no, think... I want to be left alone. I want the government out of my life. Do you think um, parents should have to prove their experience that they're capable of teaching their children in no. their home schools? No. <laughs> no. What about, um, I think, I think Bartholet mentioned concern for K through five children and early home visitation. And she even talks oh. about a voluntary, um, this kind woman of, is crazy. A volunteer program from David Old. So oh, saying, someone would visit parents in first, the hospital. No, no, no after first time parents saying, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, someone could come in the hospital, kind of give them advice on how they should, you know, raise their child, stay out of drugs, alcohol. No one should be telling you how to raise your child. And if they are, mm, stay away. Stay she away. really liked that program. Um, <laughs> she, so, yeah, she said um, folks from the program would come visit you right after you delivered your child in and hospital. talk in the hospital and then um, continue to follow up with you for the early years of your child's life. And she said she really liked it. Um, Milton said, who's also kind of on her side of the fence, he said he considered two sets of eyeballs on each family. 
Um, like I said, they're always watching. <laughs> so, all right. So let's wrap this up. How about this final uh, question? The state has failed to excel at education. So why will we give them more power? We shouldn't give them more power. We should never give government more power. If they continue to fail, should we just let them continue to no. fail and give them more customers to no. let down? Why not? Because how does that even make sense in anyone's mind? If you're failing, why would you give them more? It's just like how we're always talking about how, oh yeah, the public school's failing. Let's give give them more money. They're not using the money that they have right now properly, and that's why they're failing. They're, you know, throwing all this money into junk that they don't need. What do you think about um, Bartholet saying the state asserts rights of child? What happened in White County last year where the oh, rights of the children were not protected? They're being violated. If, if, okay, what, what was it that there was like the. Um, it was a diversity <laughs> yeah. inventory yeah. sheet yeah. where if, pupils' privacy rights were violated because, you remember why? Uh, because they were being asked personal questions about religion, right. um, sexuality, how their parents vote, registered to vote. Um, why, why would you even answer that question in the first place if ever anyone ever asks you that? Um, it might go back to civics. Students might not know their constitutional rights. Right. First Amendment. All right. And, and let's, all the other amendments. <laughs> so let's close this out with um, the mentioning from Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Do you think um, parents should have complete power over their homeschools and no yeah. regulation? Uh, well, I mean, there should be, I think there should be. That's Elizabeth Bartholet's words. Minor regulation, but not like absurd, like, oh yeah, send your child to, uh, you know, the public school twice a week so they can have forced, um, forced <laughs> socialization. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Good point. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us again, Izzy, you're doing a great job. And um, can you t tell everybody where they can tune in? Yeah, tune in for more. Uh, like, subscribe on YouTube. Um, go to NC School, North Carolina School Choice or NC School Choice. Um, and thanks for watching. And wait, wait, if you go to NC School Choice, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and you can get notifications. And yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>